both, I guess. Your first first double header of the day. Awesome. Wow. So I'll open it up. We gotta start with Champ, the five time. Good to see you. Ready for another season here? Yeah. I'm excited. Excited today's over almost. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm looking forward to yeah getting in in, in uh, the car over the next few days. It looks like the weather's going to be a bit interesting, but um, yeah, it's already been a couple of races in the season so far, and a lot of different cars, and and uh, that's been fun to kind of try something different. But but really uh, looking forward to get back in any car and trying out this aero screen and get some wet weather running with the aero screen. It's going to be cool. You've had a big off season. Added another one to the brew. Yeah. Yeah, it probably wasn't a good idea to sign up for extra races either. So um, that's been challenging, but but it's it's been fun, you know. And, and uh, the baby's doing really well, um, sleeping quite well through the nights already, which is which is really good and not too fussy. Which you know, I think with our first puppy was a little bit tougher than than uh, than Kit has been. But um, yeah, all in all, like Emma's been amazing. So it's been uh, it's been a good start. Of have, busy off season. You haven't expanded. Uh, Lineup at your race team, which is the first time I think since seventeen. Yeah, it's been a little while. I think this time around, it's probably um, been a much smoother transition in, in the fact that it went from you know kind of downsizing or phasing out the GT side. Um, it's kind of the first time in probably two or three years I felt that the team is is really well supported. You know, I think we we're probably running a little bit lean in the last couple of years, just with trying to find. You know, engineering staff and, and people in the advanced engineering groups and, and even mechanics and things like that. So it's uh, I think we're in a really good spot with uh, the addition of, of Marcus and, and I think even that addition has helped. You know, Felix and uh, my situation at the team just with with uh, some changes that we've had in the off season. So yeah, I think we we from at least my view of it, I think we're a lot better prepared uh, coming into the season than we have been for a while. Do you? Put the kibosh on uh, Swedish talk. You say none of that because you're in charge. I don't know. He's not allowed in our truck, is he? Where's he stand? Yeah, Marcus. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't think we fit three drivers in no. our truck. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I don't, I don't. No, yeah, yeah. There's no Swedish talk apparently. Oh, yeah. It says on the door. They banned it. Yeah, it. it's banned. <laughs> Felix, you had um, really strong conclusion of the season last year. I was going to give him this mic. You. Five time doesn't give up his microphone. Uh, you had a had a nice strong finish to the season. You have to be pretty optimistic moving into twenty twenty. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it ended really well on the especially on the road courses. I think the the ovals are probably the you know the easiest game for me going into this year where we can make a lot of improvements. Um, as yeah, so Scott said, I think I think the biggest thing you know looking forward is that the team you know there's a good feeling in the team when you go to the shop you can feel that there's a good energy. As I say, we're not uh, you don't feel that like people are stressed in the same way. Um, more people, more the main engineers. I think on that side we look a lot stronger. So it's just a good feeling to have you know not only our extra car but also Marcus on the team. I, I think we look really strong. Yeah, I'll ask Scott about Michael Cannon joining the team. It's uh, the new engineer for you and, and uh, a character that we all have a lot of respect for in this in this room. Talk about Michael. Yeah, it's been, uh, obviously we haven't done too much together yet. You know, we've, we've kind of gone through a lot of the off-season stuff and just, you know, kind of what our path was and, and what his path has been for, for the last few years. It's definitely interesting bringing someone new into the mix. We haven't done it for quite some time, and I think that's what we've been craving for, just to think outside the box a little bit. And, and you know, he does. He doesn't, you know, always stick to what should generally be observed or, or done. You know, I kind of like that he, you know, can be a bit aggressive and, and uh, you know, the feel that he has for, for yeah. old school engineering yeah, too, old school. which is which is fun. So you know, having said that, I think we you know we've always had a, a fantastic team. You know, it's going to be pretty different. You know, not talking to, you know, Chris. Chris is still going to be on the stand for a little while. I think with uh, during the races on the nine car, uh, but I think again, like what Felix was talking about, just the depth that we have now on the engineering side, especially even with the addition of the of the GT people that that, that came back over. Um, there's a lot of programs that go into running an indie car and, and especially at the level that, that we have to, um, that it was a depth that we were missing. But um, yeah, it's been great with Mike so far and, and looking forward to 
you know, working with him uh, for this season and, and uh, you know, hopefully winning some races. Questions? Paul Kelly. Scott, at this point in your career, what would it mean to you to get a second Indy 500 win, especially because it's been a few years since the first one? Would it be, you know, like Elio won two in a row early in his career. You've obviously had this gap. Would it be more meaningful or can there be no way that an Indy 500 title be any more meaningful than another? Yeah, I think, you know, one of them is great. Two of them would be better, three would be even you know, better than that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's frustrating. You know, I finished second there maybe two or three or four times, and that absolutely sucks. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's been kind of elusive. You know, I think we've, we've had some really good runs and, you know, either missed on strategy a little bit or, or just haven't executed well. I think the team in a whole, we really haven't done a good job the last two or three years. You know, even two years ago, I think we finished you know third or something, but it was it was really kind of a strategy shift that allowed us to. Um, you know, last year was quite frustrating. We just didn't have the speed, and the car actually wasn't particularly nice to drive. Um, there's some some insight that we've had in the off season that that hopefully will. You know, I think the focus has really shifted to that race, which we we kind of need to do. Um, one, it pays a lot of points. Um, and two, you know, it's still still the biggest race in the world. So um, yeah, it's it's been frustrating. For sure, um, but you know I've still been fortunate enough to win there once, and you know the goal every year is you know is to is to go back there and try and win. The the problem is there's thirty two others with the same goal, so yeah, we'll keep trying. One more, oh. David. Uh, with Michael uh, having you know shown with uh, Ferrucci's car and things, there were also four days. Uh, the the coin coin team had really good oval setups. Has that been? Was that one of the Yeah, I think um, it had kind of been on the radar for a little while. It might have happened, you know, kind of the, the season previous. It just it just didn't work, um, you know. Um, yeah, there's always areas. I, th I think, you know, you know, Iowa's been a little funky for us lately. Um, Pocono, we've run okay, but I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the time the car's not particularly nice to drive. You know, it, it's very on edge and, and, you know, so it's, it's amazing actually sitting with, with Canon and, and understanding what they did, it's, a, it's amazing these small teams are not so small. Like the money they spend, you know, there are some things that they spend money on that we would never think of because it's just like, well, that's way too expensive. So it's been really interesting to see that twist and the level that, that these small teams or so-called small teams are at, they're, they're not small. Um, you know, the budgets are pretty big, pretty healthy, and, and you've got a lot of smart people working at them. So. It's, uh, there was some big areas that we were missing, for sure. Um, and then there's some areas that, you know, we've really only got to try on the simulator so far that make sense and, and you know, uh, in theory should work. Uh, but until we get really running on track, you know, it'll be hard to tell. But, but yeah, it's nice to have, when you get stuck in that ecosystem, it's very hard to break out of it. So it's, it's been nice to be like, hey, we're doing something over here that we didn't even see as a possibility, you know? So it's, it's nice to have that kind of view of something totally different. The landscape's totally different. Uh, Felix, obviously you came out of the gate really strong in St. Pete, uh, but I look at the results from like Road America to the end of the season. Uh, five top six finishes over the last eight races, two runner-ups. I mean, what started to click for you around that time? Uh, I think once we passed uh, in a month of May and um, Detroit and I couple of other tough weekends like Texas, it, you know, I kind of started gaining some momentum again. Um, just had a really bad dip there and quite a lot of crashes. Um, yeah, it just didn't really go my way. Uh, but after that, we were starting to get really good momentum. And I, I think something clicked in terms of how the tires work in the race, how to make them last longer over a stint. Um, and yeah, I, I think at the end of the season, we were really, you know, at the level we need to be to fight for championship on the road courses. Um, but as, as I say, the, the oval is definitely, you know, that it's still a big gap to close there. And hopefully, you know, we can, if we can improve the cars a little bit, that's gonna, you know, be a big help to keep more confidence on my side. So hopefully it's gonna be a bit of a upward spiral because uh, I, I still feel, you know, that's a huge gap to, to close there. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it's, yeah, I feel, I feel so much difference coming coming into to a second season. Nathan? 
Scott, with the testing that you did with the air screen in the early days of it, um, how do you expect it, or from what you know, to be or perform any differently from adjustments or changes they've made to it coming into these next couple of days of testing? Uh, I've only done uh, Dip Richmond and, and then uh, Indianapolis, so I haven't I haven't had the chance to run on a road course yet. Um, I think I'll, the this most significant change I think will, will be on the super speedways, just the way that it maybe kind of reacts with the rear wing and maybe being in traffic could be a little a little different to, to what we've seen in the past. Um, you know, I think we expect on on the road course it's just adding weight to the car and, and you know higher CG, so it. You know, we'll definitely take its toll a little bit more on the tyres. So yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hard to comment, and, and maybe with the weather that we're going to see in the next few days, it's really going to be hard. You know, I think it'll be good to get some laps in with with testing in the rain, which will be really good for for some of the circuits later in the year, and just make sure that most of those uh, kind of unknowns are, are ticked off. But um, it shouldn't. It should because it's it's the same for everybody, right? So it's not going to alter too much. You know, some teams may adjust to it a little bit quicker. Um, but at places like Indy, where you're you're really on the edge for for you know the finite edge you can tune down to, uh, opposed to you know wing settings that most other circuits kind of set, you know is is going to catch some people out, but also be quite difficult I think to sort of wrap your head around it uh, on a mechanical setup. So, Mark Glenn, did anything here on your right? Um, Scott, you've been racing against TK for the best part of twenty years. Can you share some thoughts on him and his career as he starts winding down? Yeah, it's definitely interesting. You know, I think the the off season as such, you know, was was kind of forecasted for a pretty calm one, and it went kind of crazy uh, in in a lot of different topics. And and TK, I thought was was going to be running a full season as well, and the landscape changed quite a bit. But um, yeah, he's you know, TK's a great friend. Um, you know, I've raced against him for for many many years, and and um, you know, he's a hell of a competitor. Um, I know that you know the, the drive is still there, and, and you know the fire and, and the effort that he puts into the program, and, and you know the last year or two have, have been tough, um, not just for him but for that whole team. But you know I don't know I th I think it's more of just a, a massive thank you for, for you know to TK for what he's brought to our sport. You know it's it's been amazing. He's um he's a huge personality and and uh, you know one that I hope that he if this isn't his last year I hope that he sticks around for a little while longer. We'll just have to see what the future is. Many better on those uh, restarts at Indy. No, he's, he's, a, he's an animal for sure. He's an animal. <laughs> Steve? Felix, you've got to spend some time at home in Sweden in the off season. Have you noticed more interest in IndyCar with you and Marcus here? Definitely. I mean, it's, it's, I think last year someone told me that like 40% of all the downloaders of the new app was from Sweden. So, uh, and I think that's going to grow, especially now with both of us in the same team. You know, it's sort of been like a Marcus side and Felix side, and there's been like some violent comments across like <laughs> forums and comment, comment fields and all that. But uh, hopefully now they can sort of reunite. You say I don't see you guys being that way, but your fans might be. Right? Yeah, I don't know why really. It's a bit weird, but uh, hopefully they will always support you know Genasi instead of just one of us. No, it's this huge pack in Sweden, for sure. You're going to learn Swedish, guys. Have you listened to Swedish? Talk? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just as, just, just to, 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 Not at the top of my list. Swedish <laughs> show. Just as bad as it sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mary? I barely speak English. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll speak His manager is Swedish as well. I don't know. Yeah. He says too much. You can talk about him behind. Scott, uh, at, at Mid-Ohio last year in the closing laps you were leaving and it was a big surprise to hear the team on the radio say to Felix to go ahead and pass you if he could but to remember that you were his teammate. So um, <laughs> he did say that. Um, you know, now that there are three of you, do you think that's still you know, going to be an open policy? Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. It, it, it always has been. Um, you know, rule number one is in our team is to not take your teammate out. So you kind of know that going into all the races. Chip is pretty keen on reminding everybody that. Um, yeah, you know, we've been in this circumstance before. We've had four cars before. You know, it's it's it is it can be a tool, but it can also hurt you. So you know, you have to you have to use it wisely uh, in some situations. But you know, honestly, if we're all going for race wins, that's fantastic, and that's that's the goal. Uh, Chris Simmons said a year from now nobody's even going to be talking about the Aero 
the screen anymore. They'll be back to talking about the racing. Is that uh, kind of how you feel that people will eventually adapt to this? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think there'll be, yeah, you know, I think that's probably true. I think once you see it on track, you know, it's kind of like the Halo, right? Like everybody kind of talked a bit of smack about it to start with and, and then nobody even really, you know, brings it up anymore. Um, and it may be even less of a factor because somebody did a version previous. But, you know, I think uh, what IndyCar have done and with PPG and with, you know, Red Bull uh, Technologies, it's, you know, it's a nice piece. They've, they've done a good job. It's not easy to retrofit something like that to a car. You know, they didn't have the luxury of a new chassis and things like that. But I kind of do agree. You know, I think it's, it's going to be one of those things that people talk about for a little while. Uh, but I hope they talk about it for a long time, really, because yeah. it's going to be important for our sport and the safety of it. And also, Mike Hall said that you've driven seven iterations of an IndyCar in your career. You've been able to adapt and excel at each of them. How difficult has that been to be able to do that? Because some drivers don't transfer from one iteration to the other very well. Uh, I think that's a strong part of the team. You know, they've, they've been always very good at adapting. You know, it hasn't just been me, it's been, you know, um, the teammates and everybody. You know, it's a successful team. And I will say it seems like in the past that, you know, transitions, mostly car versions, have, have played well with the team. But we'll just have to see how this plays out. Last one from David Mosher. Oh, go ahead. Hey, welcome back to the Austin guys. Are you guys uh, looking forward to getting back out on the circuit of the Americas? And uh, I talked to some race drivers last weekend. They said the surface reminds them of 2012 after the race race. Uh, sounds nice. I mean, I don't really think we complained about the surface at all, did we? I mean, I think it was more F1 and MotoGP probably. They had some big crashes and some high sides, uh, high siders, whatever you call it. Uh, but it, yeah, it would be be great to be back. I mean, I haven't been in a car since like in Asia, so that's the longest break I've had in my whole career, <laughs> not being in a car at all. Uh, and I haven't done any Daytona or anything, so I've been, it's been quiet for me. So been on the simulator, that's it. Um, yeah, so the fire is going strong. Yeah, it's going to be good to be back for sure. Yeah, I'm you know, looking forward to it. I think you know, the weather's going to be a little bit tricky the next couple of days, but, but uh, you know, I think what's really played out for us in the last few years is, is old track surfaces. You know, I think if you look at uh, Laguna, you know, I think if they resealed that place, the, the race and the racing wouldn't be that good. You know? This year with the alternate lines and the craziness that was going on with that was, was really cool. You know, I, I was going into Laguna thinking, man, this is going to be boring as hell, but it was actually it was a tough race for one to, to you know get to the end on a set of tires, but also the racing was fantastic. So um, it'll be interesting in a couple of key points of, of the track, but you know the track is so big for an Indy car that the racing, like last year, I remember being kind of in the mid pack at some point, and and there was just cars coming and going left, right, and center. Like I kind of really didn't at one point. I'm like, man, I don't even know if I'm third or if I'm twenty third. Like it, it was just action everywhere. So yeah, I think the race will be good. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks, Phil. See you. <coughs>